Now, we know for a fact that that's not the driver that causes the problem. This is an unanalyzable crash. Every time you run it, you'll get a different kind of uh, analysis. So let's go and open the crash from the special pool run, buffer overflow with special pool. And this crash is going to look very familiar. It's going to look a lot like our first one, analyzed SD. And so if we scroll up here, driver page fault beyond end of allocation. So it detected that the driver had overrun its buffer. And if you scroll down, it points the finger at my fault. And the stack looks exactly like the stack that we saw for that first crash, where my fault was caught red-handed. So a case of turning a success unanalyzable crash into one that's analyzable. By the way, it, uh, we started a few minutes late, so I'm going to be going a few minutes over noon. And I apologize if that causes somebody, you know, people in inconvenience. The next type of unanalyzable crash we'll take a look at is code overwrite. And a code overwrite is caused when a, a driver has a wild pointer because of a bug, and it overwrites not somebody else's data, but somebody else's code. What's going to happen here is the same thing. Another driver whose code that belongs to, or the kernel, comes and trips on it and causes an illegal operation, and the system points the finger at it. There's a feature of Windows called system code write protection that is aimed at detecting that kind of bug right when it happens. But the problem with that feature is that, for performance reasons, the kernel turns it off if on a Windows 2000 system you have more than 127 meg of memory, or on a Windows XP or Server 2003 system, you have more than 255. In other words, it's never on. So how do you get it on? You turn on the driver verifier and you point at any driver at all. Or you can go and manually set it in the registry. And so let's go take a quick look at the code overwrite case in not my fault. And it's right here. And we'll get a crash instantly. But when we go look at that crash dump, it's actually going to be pointing the finger at not the guy that caused it, but at whoever stumbled on it. So let's go and open crash dump and go for a code overwrite. And there's a different stop code number that we saw there. It's K mode exception not handled. Mouse is going crazy. K mode exception not handled. Another one of those very common ones. And it actually says, oh, by the way, this is very common, like you cared. <laughs> Usually exception address pinpoints the driver function that caused the problem. Let's scroll down and look at the stack. And well, there's no third party component on that stack. It's win32k.sys, which is the Windows subsystem driver and NTOS kernel. And if we look at who it pointed the finger at up here, it's, well, memory corruption. So memory corruption. So it, it didn't even bother pointing the finger at it itself. It just says, hey, I know that memory's been corrupted somehow. If you did that same crash now with the driver verifier on, you're going to get an instant crash again. But this time, when you open the crash dump, so it's a code overwrite with write protection on. This is going to be old news at this point, because when we analyze it, analyze-v, if we scroll up and look at the stop code description, it says, attempted write to read-only memory. That's because the code that was overwritten has been marked as read-only by system code write protection. If we go down and look at the stack, well, it looks just like the one we saw with the buffer overflow and verifier. It looks like just, the, just like the one we saw with that first easy-to-analyze crash. And there's my fault.sys sitting right in the driver's seat for this crash. So that's examples of using the verifier to transform unanalyzable crashes into ones that you can analyze. But there's going to be cases where you go through the whole recipe and, whoops, I went a little too far there. Let me go back. This is where you, the slide in transitions kind of get in your way. And I don't remember offhand which slide that was, so we're getting close. Here we go. So the crash analysis recipe doesn't give you an answer that you can rely on. So well, the tool that I mentioned is the Windows Memory Diagnostic. Worth running that at any point in the crash analysis process to see if maybe it's a memory problem, especially if you're getting memory corruption or crashes all over the place. It's a free download from the OCA website. Here's the URL. But if you go search for Windows Memory Diagnostic on Microsoft.com, you'll find it. 
It installs to a CD-ROM or boot floppy that you boot the system from, and when it launches, it just runs this test continuously of testing banks of memory with different kinds of memory checking algorithms, and will flag down there in that area any errors it encounters, including what bank of memory it might have encountered that error with. So you can kind of figure out which VIM caused that problem and pull it and replace it. Run it through at least one pass, which might take several minutes. But let's assume that you've done that now, and you're still getting unanalyzable crashes. Sometimes, man sometimes you need to go in and just poke around, look for clues. And there's no guidelines here. I, it's a matter of you getting some experience or trying some different front of the bugger commands, reading through the documentation, and just poking around to see if maybe there's something to latch on to. Because at this point, you're desperate, right? It's between, if you're getting crashes and you're getting to this point in the analysis recipe, it's reinstall or, I guess, deal with the crashes. So one of the commands is LMKV to list the drivers that are running on the machine. We'll see that in a second. Bang VM, useful for troubleshooting those memory leaks that are causing crashes. So this will show you if non-page pool or page pool has run out. And that might be the cause of the crash, in which case you'd have to go do a, a leak analysis using the verifier. Look at what the current thread is doing with the bang thread command. It may or may not be related to the crash, but it might help you with a clue. Especially on server systems, do this. Bang process 00 to look at what processes are running on the machine. On a server, you need to understand, especially if it's mission critical, the purpose of every single process on that machine. For that matter, you should understand the purpose of every driver on that machine and make sure that you're up to date on all of them. Additional commands you can get through with the bang help. Of course, the help file is good, too. This next example is a stack trash, which is a crash you can generate without my fault where it will blow its own stack of its thread. The stack being the primary resource for the stack analysis, the analysis engine is not going to be able to pinpoint the cause of the crash. In fact, even if you turn on the verifier on with all the settings and point it at my fault, you're still not going to get a crash that you can analyze. Let's go take a look at that crash. Oops, I think I just, I didn't get out of uh, live meeting the right way. So here we go. I've saved off that crash now from the stack trash. Let's open it up, and let's do a bang analyze dash v. And it's a k-mode exception not handled. That flew by really quickly. The stack trace doesn't tell us anything. MT is the only module on that stack. And so the system really had no choice but to say, well, an NTOS kernel probably called it, which is what would show up in the probably caused by. I'm going to do a bang thread to look at what the current thread at the time of the crash is doing. And one of the things that it, Windows keeps track of is the I.O. operations that a thread has outstanding in this I.O. request packet list. If I do a uh, bang erp command to look at that I.O. request packet, it'll tell us what driver that I.O. is aimed at. And, whoops, I did something funny there. Oh. Control-V is what I'm trying to hit, and that didn't work. <laughs> Control-C and then Control-V. And what it tells us is that I.O. request packet is aimed at this driver right here, my fault. So even though the stack is blown, we have a clue, and this would be, you know, at this point, you're just grasping for straws. Go so take a look, make sure you, what, you know what that driver's doing and you've got the most recent version. So how about crashes that don't generate dumps? We're back to that scenario where you configure the system to generate a crash dump, but you're not getting it. There's two options here. One is to boot the machine in debugging mode. You can do that with the F8 key during the boot process. Do not do it that way. Warning, warning. Do not do it that way. What that does is causes the debugging and, uh, code on the, sur on the system you're booting to use, to assume that you're going to communicate with that system over a serial port a serial cable at the lowest baud rate supported by Windows, which is 19200. So if you're going to try to troubleshoot a crash over that kind of connection, you might as well connect the debugger to it and then take the day off, come back the next morning. So what you want to do is set up, modify the boot.ini with switches that cause it to use a higher baud rate or an alternate connection mechanism like IEEE 1394 or in Vista USB 2.0. In either case, you're, the kernel debugger on that, what's called the target, the machine you're troubleshooting, is loaded. But it does not affect performance, that is, not performance until the system crashes. Because even if you've got it set to auto-reboot, 
if you've booted into 